Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and we are finally ready to start building the shop for this shop system. In this video, we'll be setting up the user interface for our shop, and it's gonna have three parts. We'll start with the top panel that allows us to toggle between items, armor, and weapons. Next, we'll create the slots that will hold the items for sale in the shop, and then we'll create a pop-up menu to show the player key information about items whenever they mouse over them. This will give us a great start and get us ready to start actually coding this thing in the next video. All right, let's get started. All right, now to get started, we're gonna right click over in the hierarchy, go to UI and add a canvas. This will be the shop canvas, which will hold each of the panels we mentioned earlier. Now, before we do anything else at all, let's click on the shop canvas, head over to our canvas scaler. And we just wanna change it from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And then we just need to set our reference resolution. We're in 1920 by 1080 here, so we wanna match that. All right, with that done, we're ready to get moving. From here, we'll right click on that canvas and we're gonna add an image, which will be our shop panel. I'll just double click on that so we can zoom out and see it in context. I'll turn on my gizmo so I can see where my screen is. You'll notice I've got a lot of TextMesh Pro items going on here. I'm actually just gonna turn off my UI manager right now just to clean that up so we don't have to see it. All right, I'm just gonna size this image up to about 1500 by 1000, which will look massive for now, but don't worry. We're gonna make this into the banner vertical if you're using tiny swords, and we're gonna do a little bit of changes too that'll make it fit just nicely. Now, I just wanna say a few things about the way I've set up these images. If I click on the banner vertical here, you can see that I have mine set to 64 pixels per unit. That's the only really important setting here, but if we go into the sprite editor, you'll see that I have nine sliced it, which is just using this green outline here, and it breaks it into nine sections, with the corners always being preserved and fixed, while the insides and sides can be stretched to any size. Now then, I can click on the shop panel. First, let's just turn off Raycast target so that we're not clicking on it or having it block things behind it that we want to click. For image type though, we can now go to sliced. And this just gives us the ability to change our outline now. And I want it to match my UI for health. If I set it to about 0.5, you'll notice that it got a lot chunkier and much more in line with the UI I've been using all along. I can then just drag it down into the bottom right corner here so that I can still see my health HUD, my inventory, and everything else. Now we're ready to add our top panel. So just right click on the shop, add a UI image. We'll call this one top panel. I'm using the carved nine slides, which is just provides a nice backing to put our lettering on. I'll set the pixels per unit to 0.5 like we did for our outline. And I'm gonna set mine to about 1100 by 140, which gives us a nice banner. I'm gonna head to my rec transform and actually anchor it up to the top. You can click this top one and then also hold down Option or Alt on PC in order to make it go all the way up. Now, obviously, it sucks right to the top of the image altogether, and so we want to add a little bit of a margin on the Y-axis to move it down. I'll set mine at about minus 200. We'll make sure to also turn off Raycast targeting once again. At this point, now I just want to add a component here. We're going to put a grid layout group. What this will do is make it so that each of the buttons for items, armor, and weapons is put onto a grid and nicely spaced out. We'll come back to this component in just a little bit once we've actually created those buttons. Now let's create that first button. So we're gonna add a UI image to our top panel here. I'm just gonna put the button blue nine slides this time around. Once again, we'll select sliced. And for these ones, I'm actually gonna use a pixels per unit mark of about one, which just makes it a little finer, which allows us to fit more content on it. Also, you'll notice this one I actually hadn't set up yet. I'll just make it 64 pixels per unit. Then I'm just gonna come in and quickly do some nine slicing by bringing in these green lines. Once that's all finished, I'll apply and we're ready to go. All right, with those changes, you'll notice the slicing did a funny thing where now it's super chunky. So we'll just come into the image here and I'm actually gonna set this one with a pixels per unit mark of about two, which gives it a nice fine look similar to the one in my inventory. Next on the shop button, we're gonna add some Text Mesh Pro. We'll call this object text, and then in the text mesh pro, we'll write items. And in the rec transform here, I'm just gonna click on the one that expands in all directions, both for the anchor, then I'll hold option in order to have it actually suck up so it takes up all the space of the parent. From here, you can make it look however you like. I'll be using the bangers font. I'm just gonna click on color and make this one black. I'm also gonna go with a font size of about 72. Don't worry too much about the size as we'll resize that in a moment. A little note on style, you'll notice that I do have an outline here of about 0.3, and I'm also giving it an underlay, which just gives it that little bit of a drop shadow effect, and that's by putting a slightly negative value on both the X and Y offsets. I'm just gonna close that up, go back to our top panel, and now in the grid layout group, we can resize things. I'm gonna go with a cell size of about 300 by 100, and you'll notice that fits much nicer already. 
Next, I'm just going to head down to my prefabs folder and actually drag the shop button down there. That way, when we make changes to one, we can apply it to all of the buttons, which will save our time later on if we want to do little edits or changes. I can then duplicate it, and thanks to our grid layout, it makes sure that these apply in a nice grid shape. That said, I'm not in love with the default way this organizes, so let's set it so that it aligns along middle center, and then add a bit of spacing as well. I'm going to use a spacing of about 25 on the X just to give them some room. Next, if I click on my shop button, since I made this a prefab, I can now go up to the top here and open up the prefab. I'm also going to click on normal, which just lets me see the prefab in context of the actual UI that it's on. And now if I just head down here, I can actually center align this so that it looks a lot nicer. You'll notice that because it's a prefab and I'm applying those changes, any changes I make applies to the other buttons as well. And also just give it a top margin of about 10 just to move it down a bit. That's looking much nicer. And let's just take a moment right now to go into the text of the other two buttons and change them to whatever else you want in your inventory, like weapons or armor. With that done, let's close up the top panel, right click on the shop, and now we can add yet another image. This one will be our item panel. Once again, I'll be using the Carve 9 slides and we'll make it not a recast target. Again, I'm going to anchor this up to the top and then just bring it down so that it's still anchored to the top of the object, but it's got a nice margin on top. We'll set the width to about 1100 and 500 for the height and then just shift this into place nicely. Now similar to how the top panel housed a bunch of buttons, this one is going to house all of our slots for the inventory. So again, we'll add a grid layout group. This time let's go ahead and initialize the settings. I'm going to go with a base cell size of 260 by 230 and I'm also just going to add a spacing of 10 by 10. Now we're ready to add some actual buttons. So let's right click on the panel, go to UI, Button, Text Mesh Pro. I'm going to call this one Shop Slot, and this time we'll be using the Button Blue 9 sides once again. This time we will leave Raycast Target checked. I'm going to just delete the Text Mesh Pro on this button as we're going to be adding a bunch of different images and text in a slightly different fashion. So now let's go ahead and go to UI, and we're going to add an image. Here I'm just going to create a banner on which we'll put the name of the item. So we can call this Name Banner. I'm going to use the Ribbon Red 3 slides for this one. I'll anchor it up to the top, and then just give it a width of 280 and a height of about 120. We'll put the item name on top of this so we can right click that banner, add UI Text Mesh Pro, and call it Item Name. For now, we'll just put Item Name in here as a placeholder. In the Rec Transform, I'll expand this in all directions, but then I am going to just kind of bring these corners in so that it's not all overlapping the ribbon part we don't want it to be on. Once again, I'm going to use the Bangers font, set it to black, I'll center this one nicely, and go with a size of about 48. And then also just going to bring up the bottom a little so that it centers more nicely on the ribbon part. Just going to make a tiny adjustment to the name banner and bring it up a little as that looks nicer. I can then close it up, right click on the shop slot, and now we're going to add the image we'll use for our actual item icon. I'm going to use the mutton idle here and turn off raycast, and this will just be my placeholder icon for now. I'm then just going to expand it in all directions, and you can decide how much overlap you want. You can play around with the margins a little if you want to bring it in, or leave the overlap. It's up to you. Last step for these is to add a spot to put our cost. So I'm going to add a UI image here. We'll turn off Raycast once again. This time I'll use the button underscore hover three slides, which is just a different color to mix things up a little bit visually. I'm actually just going to leave this one as simple. I'm going to anchor it down into the bottom right corner. I'm going to offset it with a slight overlap here, give it a width of 120 and a height of 80. At this point, we can just add some Text Mesh Pro on there, which will display the price itself. I'm just going to put 99 as my placeholder. We'll expand that to fill all of the space. I'm going to go with bangers. This time I'm actually going to use the drop shadow, which in my case is white with a black outline, just to mix things up. I'm going to go with a size of 48. We'll center this, and then I'm just going to play with my margins to get it exactly the way I like it. If you're wanting the same sort of look I have, you'll notice here we have a black outline with a thickness of, let's actually set it to 0.3. And I'm also using just a little bit of an underlay here. To make this match my other one, I'm going to go with negative on both the X and Y, so it just has a little bit of a shadow in the bottom left. That concludes our shop slot, so I'll just close that up, drag it into my prefabs, and well, we'll just duplicate these slots. We should be able to fit eight of them. And now if you like to, you can play around with your grid to change spacing, but I don't mind the busy look, and I like the fact that we can fit eight items in here. Now the last thing we want here is some sort of a UI to show the stats of whatever item we're currently looking at. And for this, we're going to use a pop-up menu. So we'll close up our shop panel, right-click on it, and let's start by adding a UI image. I'm going to call this one Info Pop-Up. We'll use the banner vertical, and I'm just going to move it down into the bottom left here. You'll notice that it almost looks like it's not even there. It's actually just very small. 
I'll give this a width of about 400 and a height of 350 and now it's looking about right. But this one time I am gonna change the pivot from 0.5 on each to zero on the X and one on the Y. This will make more sense later on, but it's just gonna change where this appears in relation to the mouse later on when we add it as a pop-up. I'm gonna give the info pop-up its own canvas group. This just allows us to toggle it on and off by changing the alpha, which will actually affect the parent as well as all children objects. And for now, let's turn off interactable and blocking Raycast as we won't need to actually click on it. This one's actually gonna take a fair bit of UI work, so let's get started. We're gonna right click, add an image called name backing. And once again, we'll use that carved nine slides. I'm gonna set mine to 240 by 55 and then just move it up right into the top here. I'm gonna continue unclicking the Raycast here, though the canvas group kinda of does that for us as well. At this point, we can add our Text Mesh Pro and this will be the name of the item again. So let's put item name as our placeholder. As we've done a lot of, we're gonna expand it in all directions, set some margins. I'm continuing to use bangers. I'll set it to black, center that up nicely. Then we can close that up and head to our next section, which will be where we actually describe the item. I'm gonna call this one description. We'll add the carved nine slides again, go with a width of 240 by 70, and then drag it into place pretty close to the item name. We'll add a UI text mesh pro called description text, and just write some sort of dummy text in here, stuff about the item. We'll then make sure that this expands to fill the entire area and give it a little bit of a margin so it's not overlapping with that rough edge. Once again, bangers, we'll set it to black, change our font size down to about 16. Just gonna copy this text three times so we can see how three lines will look when there's a lot of text here. All right, that's looking not too bad, so we'll close up our description and head to the final section. Here we'll add one more UI image, this one's where we're gonna put our actual stat. I go with 240 by 92, it fits that space really nicely. And I'll just actually move the description up a hair so they're equally spaced out. I'll turn off Raycast Target again, and now we're ready to actually add some stats here, but different items are gonna have a different number of stats, and so we wanna be able to instantiate just the number of text for the number of stats there are. For this, we're gonna use a grid layout group to help us organize those stats as we spawn them in during the game. I'm gonna give this some presets so that we can change it later. And the cell size for each of these stats will be 110 by 25. Now, if I right click on stats, I can add text mesh pro. I'll call this stat text. For some weird reason, my grid didn't kick in there. So I just copied a duplicate and it went back into place and I deleted it. Not quite sure why that happened, but it's looking right now. All right, we're gonna use bangers. Again, I'm gonna use this drop shadow one just for a change. We're gonna make this one white with black outlines. I'm gonna put health plus one as sort of my dummy text. And then I'll give it a font size of 24. Now, because we're gonna duplicate or get rid of these dynamically at runtime, I'm gonna make it into a prefab and then just duplicate it so we can see what it looks like with up to six different stats present at once. Then we can close up stats. One last thing that I just wanna do quickly before we finish here is go right back up to our shop canvas. And I'm just gonna add a canvas group onto this item similar to what we did on our info pop-up. Again, this just allows us to easily toggle this on and off and also to change its interactability and raycast blocking with a single line of code. We're actually all set now so that in the next video, we can actually get this thing coded so that it's holding real data about real items. Hope to see you in that next video. Until that time though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.